she's a broker and we're going to talk this morning about foreclosures you know that's a word that's been in the news a lot more than we wish it had uh, mm -hmm. there's been an awful lot of that going on and it's it's been bad press for the whole idea and I dare say Kamel I don't understand the concept uh, I don't understand how this happens to people and I'm sure that there are all kinds of rules you know the banks have gotten some bad press too don't you know remember that bill I think I might remember yeah something, something about, about that. that yeah well I don't know from whence cometh all this foreclosure business, but I'd like for you to give us a Reader's Digest version of what and how. Would you do that, please, and thank you. <laughs> <laughs> there's a full, there's a full <laughs> okay. question, Camille. All right, all right. Um, foreclosures yes. is definitely something we don't want to see happen to anyone. Anyone, um, really. Foreclosure. What is a foreclosure? you don't pay your mortgage to the bank they don't come knocking on the door they just serve you some papers and uh, you don't pay you lose your home that's what it all boils down to what if at some point it seems to me I understood that if you paid the interest you know people have been hit there were not there was a poll done yesterday nine percent of those polled thought that the economy was in great shape in this country. I don't know under which rock these people I live. They're smoking. But a lot of people are without, maybe that's it, are without jobs. So if this happens to you, if you pay the interest, if you can't even pay on the principal, if you can pay the interest, does that save you? No, and, and that's where there's a lot of misrepresentation, maybe some misguidance. Um, <clears throat> no pun intended but the the media the media trying to give people out there that are in are, are caught in a bad situation right and a lot of this might not be job loss that's what we've got to remember um, it could be sickness it could be medical bills mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they they've got creditors chasing them with medical bill payments that they need to do this they need to do this and people are overwhelmed they don't know what to pay but probably the first thing they're gonna pay is their electric bill and their water bill well yeah that's kinda nice to have isn't it yeah so well. my, my point is it's not job loss It is not job loss everywhere we find as we get to reading through our information that the Illinois Association of Realtors provides us with all the other forecasts that are out there it's not just job loss it is the other things that hit us when we're not expecting them to hit well and medical is a big thing you want to believe it but in the event that any of these disasters if you will have hit your family how do you avoid foreclosure Closure. or does it just blindside you just all of a sudden there's a man at the door with a paper I think what? I think it all mounts up um, it, it's kind of amusing in the real estate business to sit at the closing table and 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 have that closer that's closing the mortgage that's representing the bank or representing the bank a, a member of the bank um, sitting at that closing table and explaining to the people purchasing the buyer on the other end telling them that you don't pay your mortgage you'll be kicked out of your home summing up what that mortgage actually states all the rules on it and um, it's going to take us if you don't pay it's going to take us a year to get you out of your home anyway mm -hmm. there are so many foreclosures out there right now that it's taking too long to get someone out of their property so how do you how do you stay ahead of the ball game if you get hit with one of these issues whether it be medical or job loss <clears throat> it's to pick up the phone and it's to get right on the phone call your financial institution your mortgager wherever it be mm -hmm. you know if you live in central illinois there's a good chance that someone in california is the one that's actually got your mortgage yeah and they don't know you from adam or care less. yes so the first thing to do and that's what if everything you read about foreclosures if you get online and you search one of the things that it'll pinpoint is get to the department that 
would help with hardship. Mm -hmm. The big word out there right now is hardship. Mm -hmm. There is a process to go through that if you are actually behind or see something that has happened to you and you know that it's going to spin out of control soon, mm -hmm. you get on the phone, call your mortgage company and get to someone for the hardship get into the um, hardship process. That hardship process, what it is, you more or less tell your story over the phone of what your situation is, mm -hmm. but they're to send you information. They're to send you a packet of information that you can fill out and apply for hardship. Whether that be, every bank is different, every mortgage company is different, but that hardship process is that you more or less tell your story of why you've gotten into this hardship situation mm -hmm. And then they'll ask you, have you got your house on the market? Yes, no. If you don't, get it on the market. I have a situation personally right now, um, a listing of my own, mm -hmm. that um, the, the gentleman did have job loss. Um, and I helped him from beginning to end. And what we had to do was go through the hardship process. Mm -hmm. So an example being, um, house is on the market fill out your paperwork, get it back to us, give us a synopsis of all your monthly bills, we'll take a look at it, we'll be back in contact with you. And they were, honestly they were, they were excellent to work with, this mortgage company on the other end. What we had to do was, we had to stay in contact with that bank that was holding that mortgage, and they actually stated, once it is on the market for 90 days, we will see what type of activity we've had. Well, we haven't had any activity. It's not, a, it's not an extremely high dollar home or anything, but the situation was he could not take care of it any longer because of the fact that it, he had no income coming in. So long story short on that situation, um, you, you roll down the line, you don't get any activity, you don't get any offers on your property. A mortgage company could possibly come back around and ask you, are you interested in maybe two to three different things? Are you interested in deed in lieu of foreclosure, meaning that you just turn that property back over to the bank? Mm -hmm. Are there consequences? Yes, there are consequences for still that homeowner, the person that, that owns the actual home. There are consequences. And that is? Consequences would be that um, let's say the loss that they take, um, uh, there's a formula out in there. In equity? Not equity. It's just the balance maybe of the mortgage and what it actually sells for in the end. Okay. You might be sent maybe a 1099 to show that it was income mm -hmm. over the course of the time mm -hmm. period. So you might then end up getting into another pitfall somewhere else with, um, you know, the IRS or anything like that. So just because you're getting rid of your home, don't think that you're free and clear. You really need to not only have a realtor help you with that situation, but you also need a real estate attorney or an accountant that knows the ins and outs, what is best for you in the long run. So a deed in lieu and foreclosure of washing your hands and giving that back to the actual bank might make you feel better, but in the long run it might catch you in another few months when you go to file. So the public really, and that's deed in lieu of foreclosure. That's not even um, going through what they call a short sale. That's another term I don't understand. Is it time to ask you that? Yeah, oh, you know, it all it all intertangles together. It all it's intertangles all together. Yeah. So short sale. You you have your home. You owe one hundred thousand dollars on it. The market doesn't. Not saying your home is not worth that hundred thousand dollars anymore, but maybe there's not enough comparables out there to justify that it is worth a hundred thousand dollars. So therefore, you can't get an offer on your property. Mm -hmm. Finally, you get an offer on the property. Let's say it comes in at eighty thousand dollars. You then negotiate with your bank on a short sale, seeing if your bank will allow you to to sell your home 
but there's still a $20,000 gap that you owe. And who eats that? The bank will end up eating it. Mm -hmm. But once again, you've got to consult your tax attorneys and your real estate attorneys to make sure of what the final recourse is going to be on your end. And everyone needs to know up front, the homeowner that's doing that short sale, um, they need to determine right up what that bank's going, what their um, what their policy is of coming back and, and hitting you with that that $20,000 loss somewhere at the end of the year when it's tax season. So there's a lot, uh, you know, the realtors can help you get the property sold and help you negotiate and help you get through to your financial institutions to help you close and seal the deal, but you still got a lot of work to do on the other end with all the other legalities. And realtors are not attorneys, they don't practice law, and they need to actually consult that legal counsel. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sitting here thinking, there was a book written many years back, uh, American Tragedy, perhaps the great American tribe, I've forgotten now. Theodore Dreiser, I think, wrote that book. This business that we're in today, what we're dis the discussion of this morning, is an American tragedy. Um, we uh, recognize that there are always some scallywags out there who tell the bank or the mortgage company to hang it on their nose they don't care. But there are a lot of really fine people in this country who are caught in a terrible squeeze. Uh, uh, you know, it, it is a true tragedy. And, and here in Logan County, I mean, having two offices, one in Clinton and one in, in Lincoln, mm -hmm. we're not seeing. We're seeing some of it, but we're not seeing what other people are seeing. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because while I was waiting to come on um, and, and talking out there um, in the lobby, it's, we live in the country. I mean, literally. We're in the rolling prairie. We're yeah. in the Midwest. Sure. We're, we're in we're, farm country. We're insulated. We're in farm country. Mm -hmm. And we're not seeing it like they're seeing it in the north, northern part of the state, southern, and the other coast, the uh -huh. east and west coast. We, um, I think there's a lot of people that are just sitting back and they still have the income, they still have the disposable income, but they're scared and they don't want to be in that situation that everyone is around us. And, and I think we're smart. But once again, those people that have gotten into that situation with foreclosure and short sale, there's a reason behind it. Maybe they shouldn't have owned a home to begin with, which gets us into the American tragedy, tragedy mm -hmm. of what happened. Mm -hmm. And, or better yet, maybe they've been hit with, with a medical or a sickness or, or, or something like that. And that's a different situation as well that we can't control. Six four eight five five one zero. in case anybody has any questions for Camille. Uh, this is an interesting topic and we could probably go on a long time this morning. Uh, what is the real estate market like right now, Camille, on this? Well, uh, I brought some figures based out of the um, July market. Okay. And um, since um, your listeners are kind of a wide range here, I just highlighted two actual counties, mm -hmm. one being Logan and one being DeWitt County. The numbers I'm going to give you are the Illinois Association of Realtors. It's a monthly housing survey. It's done by county. And these are sales as of July of 2011. Um, the August numbers have not, Pretty obviously. Current. Yeah, the August numbers hasn't been published yet. It'll be another few weeks before we see those. But um, Logan County, um, it's with opening a new office um, last year, it's been a, a very interesting market. And why I say that is, is because it's a tight and it holds strong. And um, I'm very, very pleased with it. July of... Um, 2010, the year-to-date figure, um, there was 101, 181 sales as of July of 2010, mm -hmm. okay? As of July 2011, there's been 157. So, you're not looking not at... Not very you, far off. No, not very far really? off either. Not very far off. Mm -hmm. So, the actual median level of average um, sales price mm -hmm. um, for the Logan County market in July of 2010 was $79,000. In July of 2011, 
Mm. So lower in numbers, mm -hmm. lower in actual number units is what we call it, units, right. but the volume for the average sales price was higher. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So value is good. Value is very, very good. Um, the average sales price, you know, like this, the average sales price in July of 2010 was $83,204. Now that's 10, 2010, July of 2010. Average price, July of 2011, $102,429. Interesting. So looking at that, Logan County's pretty good. Logan mm -hmm. County is very good. Doesn't um, Are these prices awfully inflated? Or would you say that the... That Realistic per, as, as pertains I, to the house, yeah, to the property? Thank you, yes. Um, I, what this tells me that the average sales price being 102000 in Logan County is that it's probably very similar to the Dewitt County market, and, but we're just reversed on those numbers, literally. We're reversed. Is that right? Yeah. And, um, but we're still strong. And um, I would say that the people of Logan County, um, they're the country people. They, because of Lincoln's proximity, the travel time to Springfield, to Bloomington, you're in a great position. People, it might be bedroom community for some, but you've also got some major employers in the Lincoln community as well. And you have a lot of rich farm ground. Mm -hmm. So in saying that, you are keeping that actual dollar in the community, rolling through the community, and maybe also um, because of interest rates, where they've been, down in that four point, five point. Mm -hmm. People are got enough equity in their homes that maybe they're going out and they're putting granite and stainless steel in to get that price up. up. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to call it inflated. It might be pride. That, well, that's a nice thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it is, might be pride uh, is, in the uh, You're from Brady Real Estate. Are they involved in farm properties as well? Um, we have not been involved in Logan County. Uh-huh. Um, not yet. DeWitt County, yes. You have. Uh-huh. Um, that's been an interesting thing. To yeah, it's been very interesting. But I will tell you that um, probably in 2000, and this is 11, probably 2009, 2010, um, I sold, I personally, um, sold quite a bit of farmland mm -hmm. um, that rolled through the office mm -hmm. and um, with investors, not not farmers. Yeah. And um, we had a um, actual farm transaction December of 2010 mm -hmm. that uh, brought very, very good dollars. Yeah. Let's put it that way. Oh, very great. Incredible to see the Mm -hmm. That figure rise. Yes, yeah. anywhere from eight to twelve thousand dollars an acre is what has been rolling out through there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, farm farm transactions are good transactions to have when you have a real estate company. I would suspect. <laughs> <laughs> well, Camille, we've run out of time. Unfortunately, we appreciate very much. And I, did you have anything you wanted to close with before we uh, get? Did you have some papers or some notes that you wanted to touch base? No, with? it's just okay. um, the foreclosure market is just a the foreclosure, the short sale. Um, mm -hmm. the whole hardship yeah. contact a realtor Brady Realtors in Lincoln and Clinton, Illinois mm -hmm. um, is happy to help by all means um, we, uh, we would very much like to help anyone that's in that situation so they just don't let it go yes. and, and lose any self esteem that they had mm -hmm. um, we can do this with no problem in helping people and people just need to, to come forth and let us know if they're in a financial situation. Uh, you, mentioned, you mentioned a secret word, as Groucho Mark used to say, the duck come down, uh, self-esteem. Uh, that's got to be very difficult for folks who find themselves in this uh, situation. Mm -hmm. uh, and th that, and it's, it's like that's an what I refer to And it shouldn't be an tragedy. embarrassment because yeah. you don't know what the situation is yeah. at all. But we're here to help. And we're located at Three Professional Park in Lincoln. And uh, we hey, have you got four nice girls there. We have four outstanding mm -hmm. agents: Linda mm -hmm. Barrick, Brenda Short, Pat Glenn, and Tina Schneider. And uh, I have just truly enjoyed, truly enjoyed um, 
working with them. Are you working with Joe Alexander? Joe Alexander is in Clinton, Illinois, is mm -hmm. where he's at. He owns his own real estate company. Joe happens to be a fraternity brother of mine much later. Much later <laughs> in school. <laughs> Very much later. I don't know if you could keep up with him or not. <laughs> well, we're going to close the viewpoint as we always try to do. I've uh, been picking on old Tom Jefferson here recently. Uh, this is somewhat appropriate. An honest man can feel no pleasure in the exercise of power over his fellow citizens. Old Tom Jefferson. Thank you for Viewpoint. Thanks for having me.